Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me here at the Sh Museum, where today we're welcoming our first hypercar visitor. The team from Zenvo are about to arrive with the TSRS, a brutal machine, an incredible hypercar. It has active aero with a wing that goes from side to side along with some seriously aggressive design. Today we're going to be checking it out. They'll get here quite shortly. We'll pull the trailer inside, get it unloaded and welcome the first hypercar to come here to my garage before we go and find out what it's all about. Now, when I say first hypercar, I'm kind of perhaps doing a slight disservice to the GT and the Senna, but they aren't quite at the level of the Zenvo TSRS. When it gets here, you will see exactly what I'm talking about. I've been able to check out the car a few times before. I rode in one down in the south of France, also got to take a look around one that was having PPF at Topaz. Well, today it is a stunning blue car that is going to be visiting. It will fit right in here at the Sh Museum, and I gather they are not very far away, so we'll get ready and then get the car unloaded shortly. The trailer has arrived containing the car in a second we will have this opened up and reveal the tsrs the first trailer actually to be here at the Museum. that'll work perfectly coming in through the shutter like that here we go then look at that we'll get it pulled out in just a moment that is looking insane the Zenvo TS RS. What a beast. Okay, that sounds good. 5.8 litre V8. Look at that wing. Beautiful. Exposed carbon, the blue paint. That is cool. Thunderous sound as the hypercar from Denmark touches down here at the Sh Museum. Could you imagine one of those in the collection? Look at that! Look at that! Snorkel over the roof. This wing, as I was saying, that effectively pivots from side to side with different aero profiles. The sound of it. Center lock wheels, sticky rubber, huge aero, aggressive carbon front splitter. That's a cool thing to be here in the garage. That is a very, very, very cool thing. The 675 LT is actually on its way out. It's going for a service and it needs a proper clean. So we'll see that shortly. Five years old, off it goes. The TSRS is looking awesome, but we're going to go for a full walk around, take a look at this in more detail, including checking out the rear wing. And to do so, I'm joined today by Alberto, Production Director at Zenvo. Welcome. Hi, Tim. Well, thank you for bringing the car. Thank you for coming along with it today. It is a striking machine, but can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yep, so um, Zenvo is our Danish hypercar. So Zenvo has been formed uh, 12 years, and this is our latest iteration, the Zenvo TSRS. So this is our flagship model, 1177 horsepower, 1200 newton meters of torque. It's a 5.8 litre V8 twin supercharged in-house developed engine, um, even down to our, the ECUs are, are our own. Everything you see is developed in-house, carbon fibre, we have our own carbon department. So um, that's all developed at our factory, our factory headquarters in Denmark. I mean, that's an extraordinary power figure. Nearly 1,200 horsepower, and it's not particularly heavy either. No, it's 1,450 kilos, and uh, 0 to 60 is a, a proven 2.8. It's not a theoretical figure. All rear driven. Yeah, all rear wheel drive, yeah. Which is, again, incredible. And then we need to talk about the wing, the zentripetal wing. Zentripetal wing, yep. So that's our patented aero design, almost like an aero anti-roll bar. Um, in maximum attack angle, as you're cornering, there's 75 kilos of sideways force acting on the car, pushing it towards the apex of the corner. Right, because the way it effectively works is it, it pivots from side to side to use to, to be more effective in the higher air, air off to the edges. That's correct. So it works the opposite way to the brain would think. So if the car goes right, the wing banks left. <laughs> so it, it actually looks a bit strange. Um, but um, yeah, I'll do, a, I'll do a short demo. 
Definitely. Can we yeah. can we give that a go? Can we can we put it into the uh, the show mode effectively to see how this works? Of course, we've got lots of lovely carbon fibre exposed over the engine bay, but this is really quite fascinating to be able to see. <laughs> Look at that! Pivots forward as an air brake, left and right using the hydraulics for cornering, and exactly as mentioned, that's what gives it the aerodynamic benefits. That's really quite something to see. The way that works that's not a well as you said it's it's unique it's patented and and can we have a look at the engine and there's a yep. bit of a, a bit of a procedure with yeah. the wing back you just here. have to get the wing out of the way right. folds back oh, like that easily. Yep. easily done no, no, release this button large rear clam opens to Reveal the heart of the beast. Carbon City is what I, I've nicknamed it. Carbon City. Yeah. Oh yeah, you're not wrong. Carbon finishing panels everywhere. The carbon brace across the top of the engine as well. Again, so inlet manifold is, is all carbon fibre. That's made in house. Um, we do a range of our own carbon fibre weave. So everything is, you know, it's, it's fully up to the, the customer what, what pattern or what carbon he mm -hmm. wants. Because every single one of these is completely bespoke. Yeah, you know. there will never be a car the same. Yeah, so it's um, the specs are endless. Yeah, possibilities to, are endless. Down to full carbon bodies, different colours, and I've even seen some of the logos inside the carbon before. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So we can do custom patterned carbon as well. Um, we've got the white car that was on show at Goodwood that had Zenvo down mm -hmm. the door, that and section. within the carbon we had our Zen, uh, Zenvo hexagons as well. Um, so again, uh, as far as the mind will go, then that's what we can produce. And then inside, very much race car setup, carbon yeah. bucket seats, harnesses. I'll just put the dash on so you can see the... Again, back to the, the in-house developed stuff. You know, we don't use any of the switch gear from any other vehicle. That's all Zenvo's own. You won't see that dash or display in any other vehicle. Climate control, for example. Mm -hmm. um, gearbox? Gearbox, um, it's a Chima ha uh, casing, but the internals are all our own developed dog box, our own semi-active yep. diff. Which so, gives um, a very raw feeling. It's a, uh, yeah, an enormous amount of development, but here we are 10 years later, and now we can really reap the benefits, you know, so. Um, it's amazing to see how much the car has evolved over that time, you know, into, into this extraordinary thing here. But um, if it's okay with you, I think we should head out and go and uh, it'd be my pleasure yeah experience what this is like all right then okay. this feels cool and it sounds cool as well it sounds really cool so little ride shotgun to get a feel for it that's and then, right and then we'll swap around shortly So this particular model of TSRS, um, we've got our Zenvo dog box. Um, so as I said earlier, it was a Chima casing, but the internals are dog engagement, so they're instant upshifts. Now there are two options as a customer. You can have the dog box, or you can have our synchro box, which is a, a, a slower shift, but it's more of a comfy shift. So if you're not interested in instant upshifts or track days, um, that's the option for you, but as you'll see in this particular car, our dog box solution, I mean, I'm proud to say is one of the best dog boxes in the world, you know, you can drive it every day without fault. Um, it is effectively a manual. It's a manual, so it's always in manual mode. Um, it will change down for you, but again, we do have an automated option on our TS1 GT, which is our comfort car. Yeah. Um, and you can flat shift it as well. And you can flat shift as well. So I'll just demonstrate the flat shift. It's a hold on tight moment. And you'll, you'll hear the sonic boom there. Wow! <laughs> and that's only road mode. So, you know, yeah, there's, that's in our IQ engine setting, which uh, the ECU is constantly speaking to the traction to see if there's any slip. If there is wheel slip, the EC will back off the power. Okay. If there isn't, it'll, it'll give you more power. And then there's, so there's two modes. There's IQ and then there's max power. 
and max power is just all 1177 horsepower <laughs> if you're a madman yeah. um, so and you, then, have, you have a few different driving modes so we're on road at the moment yeah so road you've got two gearbox modes and two engine modes so max power and iq on the engine mode and then uh, road mode for the gearbox and then race mode where okay. the display changes you get slightly more blip on the downshift and every upshift is a is an instant shift yeah okay a little bit mental then it's um <laughs> you'll see when you when you drive you'll you'll be impressed because it's it, we're, you know we're a low volume hypercar manufacturer and a lot of people think okay it's going to be harsh or race car-esque but we, we've just spent so many years you know refining our solution and, and you will be impressed so um, I'm looking forward to you having a go no pressure then there. there's no pressure at all yeah Little town yeah take a seat in the Zenvo just do that door a bit harder that's just uh, that's it now we just drive completely normally digital rear view mirror, yep. camera for that. Gosh, you can immediately tell this is a powerful machine. <laughs> Just feather the throttle and you have that deep grumble behind you. The look of the arches out front is quite nice, though how prominent they are. Yeah. And then those burbles, even on a gentle shift. Obviously unusual driving a, a left-hand drive car in the UK. There's always that hard, yeah, it's a hard aim trying to do a hypercar that's a good road car and there's yep. more than just one road you need to dial it into but yeah I, I think yeah I, I think we we've done a good job well our British roads yeah. really put you to the test they, they do <laughs> we're, we're, we're quite spoiled in Denmark because there's only six million people so the roads are all tarmac rally stages yeah. you know, they're perfect so, uh, Charges whistling and yeah. yeah, and then in theory you put your foot to the floor and you have to be quite brave to go full throttle to get the sonic boom. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> that is quite a feeling. Yeah, and you've got the wing flapping around in the back, which you can't miss in the mirrors. So yeah, it, it's an exhilarating experience, and you know, it's all about emotion. Yes. Yeah. I think that's something that's actually quite hard nowadays as well because a lot of cars are becoming very, very clinical. Yeah. Especially in the pursuit for performance, you know, numbers are just getting out of this world. Yeah. And it's very easy to forget that a lot of the times we buy these cars is because it's an emotional and passion yeah. connected thing. Yeah, we're kind of we get told we're like an old school sort of car because it's very driver orientated, but yeah back to your point it the more the new cars it's less driver input now as where we're still it's all about the driver you know even if you look at the seats everything's pointed towards you you've got the blue of the matching seats for you yeah. I'm in the passenger seat it's all black it's not about me it's about you you know that so separation of yeah the driver and passenger side. yeah again you can have the, the white cars got all the same interior spec yeah. but I'm trying to show just showcase what we can do um, you know, the spec and possibilities are endless. You can have our fragmented carbon here. You could have those Zenvo logos that we spoke about earlier in the carbon inside. Yeah. Um, you know, anything you wish. We do two different steering wheels. This is the comfort wheel. Mm -hmm. The the red car that you drove uh, we're in at Monaco that has our track wheel. You know, the very small yeah. track focus wheel. So yeah, there's there's plenty of options now. If you click it into race on the gear gearbox. This button on the yeah. right. Then you'll notice as you as you downshift, there'll be more of a blip. Yes, yeah, so yeah. just revs it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's it. And then also when you're even higher, you get you get flames on the downshift as well. Okay. So uh, and this camera here in the evening is uh, what I call the flame cam because that's all you see. Yeah. Really? Yeah. When you downshift, you draw yeah, your eyes up. That's it. And the upshifts as well. You just get this flash. Yeah. So every uh, time you do the flat shifting and you get that sonic boom, you get a flame. Like that's a massive flame yeah. out the back. I think we need a slightly more open, faster pace. Yeah, we're in a bit of traffic, aren't we? Yeah. Not the ideal conditions, but sometimes it's also about what fun you can have in normal driving conditions. Yeah. You know, how a car makes you feel if you are just stuck in a traffic jam. I've done, I mean, yeah, I went, I've driven three hours each way um, to see our friend Zach, Zach's garage. Okay, so, yeah. you know, I drove that all the way from Silverstone there and back. Cool. And it rained on me as well. So it's just, again, showing people that 
this is a usable hypercar. You can use it in the rain. You can leave it out overnight. If it rains, no problem. You know, you can jet wash the car. Um, what do we have by way of luggage space? Luggage space, yeah. You can fit three bags in the front. Not okay. quite your golf clubs, but... No. <laughs> um, yeah, you can go away from the weekend, you know, to the Alps or something like that. I mean, I I often talk about it all the time, but the dream is to take this across the Alps and just over a weekend, I mean, it would be a fabulous trip. There's, oh, yes. <laughs> there's space for that. You know, you can fit a suitcase in the front. Um, we're not we're not strapped for room in here. Loads of headroom. No, it's, it's surprisingly spacious inside you know, the car. You can fall in and out without mm -hmm. looking like, you know, yeah, you no need to be on the seat a or gymnast anything. <laughs> or anything like that. So, yeah, it's, it's very usable. You get that fizz from the end sound, flat plane crank style noise. What do we rev up to? Uh, seven and a half, yeah. You can hear the induction then. When, when you're excited tonight, you can hear the induction, the chargers. You can really hear that it's on song then. <laughs> that is a wild feeling. The road finally opens up. The noise of the superchargers. That's cool as well. We'll get it opening up even more coming out to the uh, roundabout here. Wait until the wheels are in a straight line. Yeah. So that is why we went dog box, you know. Yes, you lose a little bit of sort of three point turn maneuverability, but the positives far outweigh the negatives, you know, for drivability. And the experience of it as well. Yeah. I mean, dropping it down to the second gear. <laughs> Accelerate, you've got the wing pitches just yeah. to give the rear just a little bit more traction. So the wing's always active. Yeah. Um, you don't get enough G and speed on the road to make it do its thing where it tilts mid corner, um, but it's always either active as an air brake or as a traction aid when you're accelerating. So, as well as flipping forwards for an air brake, it also yeah. sits flat almost. It does, outside. yeah, and it also it flips forward as you're accelerating just to give the rear a bit more downforce, a bit more traction, yeah. really comes into its own you know it's it's a high-speed car it's designed to go yes. fast so obviously speed limits are limiting in, and UK roads are limiting because the quality yeah. of them but you start to really feel the car dial itself in it glides along yeah and feels so much more happy with you yeah if you're at this I mean the top speed is 200 plus miles an hour right it's yeah so it's um, 325 k's, which is 207 yeah. miles an hour, is it? It's just um, 200. Yeah. So that's our, we've done that purposely. We've shortened the ratios up because this is our track focused, road legal, but track focused car. The TS1 will go to 375, which we've electronically limited. I mean, yeah. it's almost 12 on horsepower. It will do the top speed. Um, and again, if the customer wants it, we can put that final drive in this car. Um, so it's this constant battle, isn't it? Because one of the big questions with a crazily, crazily traumatic car is how fast does it go? Yeah. But the more aero you stick on, 
the more you make it track orientated, shorter ratios, more downforce, but also more drag in a straight line. Yeah, I mean, as a road car, I'd far rather have a shorter ratio because if we ever cut, you know, if you ever a challenge, shall we say that, we're going to accelerate. This thing accelerates like nothing else I've been in, you know. So, um, yes, we're limited top speed, but where else are you going to do on the road that kind of speed? This will get there substantially quicker than the longer ratio car. So, so with, um, with the gearbox, obviously, if you idle it down towards a roundabout, it will drop down through the gears. Does it have any equivalent of, say, a kick down or something like that? Or you, you have to? No, you have to. You have to down, down, downshift. Yeah. yeah, you have to. Yeah. Yeah, hydraulic steering, so really, it's very light. It's, it's a big car, but it doesn't feel like a big car. It's, it is very light on the steering, so you've get, got a lot of feedback. <laughs> wow. That is the only issue with this, a car like this, is when you had your first dump valve on your turbocharged car, <laughs> you were constantly changing gear to hear the dump valve. Yeah, you this is a similar to. thing with the sonic booms, you know, you, you, you want constantly to. want to hear the bangs. And do this. Yeah. <laughs> it just gets more and more ridiculous. I think a, a, a small drop yeah. on the window. Myself, sort of in sixth and seventh, you know, just cruising. Um, it, it can be quite a just a comfortable, almost lazy is the wrong word, but if you want to just cruise like now, right now we're in seventh, nice. 70 mile an hour, there's the exhaust vaps close, it becomes very quiet, we can talk. Um, so this is our this is our standard exhaust. There is a louder, a louder exhaust, mm -hmm. um, but as you can see by that tunnel run, it's not needed. This, yeah. is, this, is, this is plenty for pretty much any yeah. purpose. The um, other thing is that it, it, you have a, a good balance of sound deadening. It's easy with some cars, like in the Senna, for example. You're hearing so much of the road, and yeah. tires on the tarmac, and stones pinging off, that you do have to shout at your passenger to have any form of communication. Yeah. Whereas in here, yes, you have a very loud V8. Yeah. You can feel everything, right? You can you. feel it, yeah. But it's not completely intrusive on a conversation. Yeah which is always a good balance. You don't really want to make a massive bang next to a cyclist. <laughs> I feel like that would be brutally yeah. unpleasant. Just when we're away a little bit. This is honestly a seriously emotional and involving drive. Yeah. That's what makes it quite so exciting. I wasn't expecting it to be quite like this. Okay, I think that's my last bang for now. <laughs> what a drive. Right then, we return. Well, that was very cool. Thank you ever so much for the drive and for bringing this along today. That was, that was good. I enjoyed it even from the passenger seat. So yeah, we'll just neutral and neutral part brake, and then just pull the key out, and that's quite cool as well. The key placement in the centre, incredible. Thank you. That was epic. No problem, Tim. Well, that was good fun. It's noisy. It makes some exceptional sonic booms. Yeah, what a drive. That's really, really an involving experience. Well, that was quite the experience. It is unlike 
any other hypercar, a totally brutal machine, as I described earlier, the Danish hypercar. I've never been to visit the home of Zenvo, but maybe one day that could be possible. But to drive the TSRS that, as we said, I had ridden in before, the red car a couple of years ago with trolls down in Monaco. But this today, out on some familiar roads has just been an ultimate experience. I think it looks stunning as well. All of the aggressive lines, this paint color in particular, mixed with the silver wheels, of course, I would be a fan of that appearance and learning a little bit more about it, about how it all works. So a big thanks to Alberto for joining there for the drive, for taking us around this incredible machine today. But I think that is pretty much all for now. The first hypercar, as I said, to visit here at the Schmuseum, if we're not counting those two, but I think debatable, we could say this comes to the height of exclusivity. There will not be very many TSRSs in total, but today that has made for quite the drive experience. So thank you very much to the Zenvo team for coming with the car here to the Schmuseum today. And thank you to you guys, as always, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. That's it for now, though. Thanks again, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers.